What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCuga here with Thad Williams. We are doing a fresh Collider TV Talk. If you notice, there are two hosts here, unlike the Oscars, which will have zero hosts. Uh, or 20. We're oh, not sure. We're, we're not really they're sure. Now, they're now trying to uh, assemble the Avengers. <laughs> Literally, I saw that this morning. They are assembling the Avengers for a reunion on stage because why they're have one dead. host when you can have every single person that's ever been in a movie? Yeah, I just I can't wait for the, uh, the Billy Crystal just snub. He's like, eh. <laughs> I want them to just cut to him like, in the audience where he's like, guys, I could have done it. I'm right here. I have I know what I'm doing. Literally right here. <laughs> uh, that's not TV at all. We talk TV here. You guys subscribe to the podcast channel here. You guys can listen, uh, tell your friends, whatever, if you enjoy TV. And your friend's like, I need to hear people talk about TV. This is the show for you. Uh, I'm at Josh McCuga. That's at Thad Williams. Uh, we got a full rundown today. Tons of stuff happening early in the year. I mean, this weekend we got True Detective premiering, and I can't wait. Is that this weekend? That is this weekend. I thought it was next weekend. January 13th. Holy crap, my yep. weekend has changed. Yep, there you go. I uh, that, bang, that, bang, change, that changes everything. Because January 18th uh, is... Right, that's like big premiere weekend with uh, yeah, Punisher. All that stuff. Star Trek Discovery Season 2 comes out on the can't 17th, which wait. I know you're looking forward so to. So psyched, man. Uh, <laughs> Just pumped. Somebody uh, on Hypothetical Questions was like, what if we did an all-fan episode? And it was like, what if Josh liked the CW superhero shows? Oh, like, no. what if Josh still liked the CW Like, shows? there's an Elseworlds where you, <laughs> where you are a fan well said, of, well uh, said. of CW? Yeah. Uh, just ramming my head against a brick wall week <laughs> after week. Uh, okay. So, let's get this started. Let's talk Golden Globes real quick. Yeah. Um, I Because they do TV on the Golden do. Globes. They along sure with do. the movies. They, they, sure do. they forget about it sometimes, but they do do it. Yeah. They, uh, they also had two hosts. I don't know what was better, having no hosts or those two. Yeah, I will say... <laughs> Sorry, I, that was that I was will mean. say, uh, this morning, while I was waiting for you to come in, I uh, I watched Sandberg was on Late Night with Seth Meyers, mm -hmm. and he came on and read all of the unused jokes. Oh, and they were much better, I'm uh, sure. There were some funny ones. Okay. There, there, there were some funny ones. Uh, the best part was... Uh, he and Seth both jumped into a John Mulaney impression at one point. Oh, nice. They were talk like, like, John Mulaney wrote that, as you do. <laughs> like, like, they both started, like, going off on one another with yeah. their best John Mulaney. It's it was very good. funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we got, uh, finally, some recognition for the Americans, as we yes. thought might happen, as their swan swung. Swan swung? Their swan swan. <laughs> Their swan song uh, of one of the greatest finales in the history of television. Uh, they Correct. got what was coming in. You know, the, the other four uh, nominees, I never watched Pose, but Killing Eve, Homecoming, and Bodyguard were all very good. But I yeah. don't think they were on the level of the American. It was a different thing. And it was nice to see because sometimes you can never tell with the Golden Globes. Right. I, it's 93 press reporters yeah. from around the globe and uh, they 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 have their own kind of way of doing things yes. and it throws everyone for a loop especially like the film critics and the people that think that they can predict the awards they they, they always go in a different direction yes so, so a lot of times with uh, television and we saw it in the comedy category they go with the new they oh, like yeah, always. they like something like that year they did girls yeah the, the year that yeah. like they they go for like the thing that just premiered that just used all their marketing money for a really big party that mm -hmm. they all were invited to and they liked it. Well, we had Todd Garner on Collider Live and he was like, it's it's a it's like a hundred foreigners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's all and it they, is. They, you know, it's, it's a very different it's a very different thing. So yeah. it was nice to see them acknowledge a body of work. Yes. As opposed to like a homecoming uh, honestly, bodyguard, homecoming, killing even pose, they're all season one shows. Yes. Every single one of them. And they probably canceled each other out oh, a little yeah. bit. But yeah, they, you can tell it's like all fresh and then this one holdover from the But then years they past. also are like, okay, if we give it to the Americans, then we'll give it to Richard Madden in Bodyguard. Right. And then we'll give it to Sandra Oh in Killing yes. Eve, which she could have saved that really dramatic part of the opening for her acceptance speech. Yeah, and I like, think they, they, they should have told her straight up, like, you're going to win. Right. So save that You don't need that. to do that. Because people laughed at her because they thought it was the setup for a joke. I thought a joke was coming. I was. A, they thought it was a setup for the joke, and then instead it was a very heartfelt thing and it felt bad because she stumbled as people started to laugh right. because it threw her off and then because you expected it kind of, a punchline it spoiled it spoiled the moment right. which was which was disappointing. Which is disappointing and they and then because 
because of that weird moment, they stepped on what I thought was their best joke the whole night, which if you haven't seen A Star is Born, spoiler alert, don't listen, like mute mute the, the feed for like 20 seconds. Yeah, in they, five, four, three, two, one. They introed the two, Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper as, he found Allie and she found him in the garage, yeah. Bradley Cooper and Lady Gaga, which I, because I just watched Star is Born that afternoon, I hadn't seen it yet. I missed it because and of the whole rigmarole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. The audience didn't catch it. it they, they breezed past it. I laughed my ass off. Mm -hmm. And Amanda's like, that's dark. I'm yeah. like, I thought that was hilarious. Hysterical. Like, those are the kind of jokes that I expect from the Golden Globes here and there. And it was the only time that they really, like, dug into them a little bit. Yes. Minus the Les Moonves joke, which I also liked because it made all the, the Big Bang Theory stars who looked like they did not want to be there. Oh, God, no. Uh, it made them very uncomfortable. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so Richard Madden again he won Sandra O won and then this Kaminsky method and that's the one that I texted you about wow okay. yeah Amanda and I watched every episode you did how yes. many episodes are there I think eight okay and it just ends there's no like cliffhanger it's felt like a like a limited series I well, guess and but they're they... working on a season two now apparently okay. sure because it was a hit it was fine supposedly. I thought it was going to be a little more Grace and Frankie and it was I don't know I, I don't it, it felt sort of like an episode of Barry, but without Barry and just the acting class. <laughs> so just, yeah, so minus, it was like one half of a show. Mm -hmm. It was just the, just the inside baseball stuff. Yes. And I think that's probably why people have been drawn to it because of the, because it's actors on actors and yeah. you've got the the legends of Alan Arkin and Michael Douglas yep. and they're poking fun at their careers yep. and I think everyone's really excited they're like oh Chuck Lorre he did a thing that wasn't terrible right. like good for you like well he did a thing without a laugh track I wouldn't exactly call it fair you know fair I mean it's good it's just it's it's a different thing for him and it, I will say he 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 seemed genuine yeah. in his acceptance speech where he's like I'm not used to this because mm -hmm. I don't normally get this kind of recognition for my stuff yes uh, like I make all the money but I don't get the gold things I literally so, walk into my house made of gold yeah yeah he is Scrooge then, McDuck he, yes he has a money bin and he jumps into it uh I it's it's just tough as like you can go to like a really crappy roadside diner and get steak and eggs, or you can have steak and eggs at Ruth's Chris, which is marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Right. And, or Barry. Yeah. And, or The Good Place. Right. And I didn't watch Kidding. Um, I, I, I mean, I watched the first few, but I... I couldn't get into it. Yeah. But, but Barry, Good Place, and Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, all fantastically amazing shows. And The Kaminsky Method was legitimately just like, it was something we watched. Yeah, it was just a thing. <laughs> There's a glow... I mean, it's that, it's that, it's that oversaturation of... Sure. Of content where it's and then these Michael Douglas happen. wins for a Kaminsky match, yes, which and is a, a, up against. I mean, okay, I didn't like Who Was America. No, it, I, it didn't. It didn't work. I think I think Glover and Hater cancel themselves, cancel each other out because I feel like it's a very similar audience, yeah. like from the critical response of it all, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, it's you know these actors and they're directing and they're writing and they're like doing these passion projects and like I feel like they all can they get kind of lumped into the same thing, whether or not. I mean, tonally, they're not necessarily the same, but I feel like they get lumped together. Just like in the in the series category, I feel like Good Place, Barry, and Maisel have maybe. a lot of crossover with within these ninety within these ninety three voters. Or maybe it's the again the flip where they're like, well, we gave it to Rachel Brosnahan for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Do we give it to the series too? Right, and 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 hard, and I don't think a series has gone back to back yeah. in the comedy category. Since like the first two seasons of Glee. Oh, okay. So that was a long time ago. Interesting. And 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 it was a rarity when it happened then. So yeah. I think that it it they don't normally do repeats. I was kind of bummed about it though because I really wanted to see what kind of weird tuxedo and hat combination. She wasn't Amy wearing a hat. I know. I was really bummed about it. But you know who was wearing a hat? Joelle Monet or uh, is that Joelle Monet? Yeah. Okay. She might be the most beautiful person I've ever seen in my life. I she, think you're absolutely right. She is. I mean, strikingly gorgeous and the most talented person I think on the planet I mean, in some she cases. is incredibly talented. Yeah. Singer, actor, all this kind of stuff, right? That hat, though. <laughs> I mean, it was a hat. And people wear weird outfits. I, 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 Rachel Brosnahan's yellow dress. Uh, well, that's that's Pittsburgh yellow right there. I know, I know, but I, I liked the canary. I just didn't feel like it worked with her complexion, but if we're going into the fashion oh, conversation. Let's go fashion I mean, I'm here. just saying, I feel like, I I feel like she has Joelle a very, she has that porcelain skin. I don't think it worked with the bright yellow. I said that Joelle Monet's hat kind of reminded me of like one of the people in the crowd in Coming to America in the first wedding. Like the, the oh, wedding in the thing. The Zamunda wedding? It, the Zamunda <laughs> wedding. And I was yeah. like, 
I'm confused by because you could. She is so perfect right. in everything, and that hat just took away everything from me. I'm like, take the hat off. Uh, well, I don't. I don't like your hat. Fair enough. You know who I felt bad for was Idris. Had this awesome like green suit or whatever. Sick. Like just amazing awesome. tuxedo, but. His the two pieces of his tie got separated before he walked on stage, and they looked so it looked like he was wearing a bolo tie, <laughs> like a, like like Colonel Sanders style, because no one was like, oh, Idris, hold on a second, and they yeah. just like stick him together. Yeah, I felt really bad for him because I was like, you you look so put together. It's like you're almost Bond. Yeah, it's like <laughs> almost. almost. But so he did. Good. Then he he posted a photo of uh, of himself like a selfie in the in the audience and with Daniel Craig like creeping on him in the background <laughs> with the caption awkward. So, <laughs> so he's playing into it, which I appreciate. That's, that's amazing. And again, and, and you not, would hope you not would. television. Sorry. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm a little upset. Listen, I watched the assassination of Gianni Versace uh, every single episode and it was good. And I, and I've said this a bunch of times in this show, but it's not better than escape of Dana Mora. And I don't think it's better than sharp <laughs> objects. <laughs> Ooh, it's I, very close. I thought that I thought that Versace was better than Sharp Objects because okay. Sharp, Sharp Objects and bored the hell out of me for six it hours. It did, yeah, it did. And and then kind of but worked. Escape at Danamora did not bore me at all. No, it was per, it was pitch perfect from start to finish. Yes, yeah. uh, and uh, Patricia Arquette deservedly won. Yeah, agree. Uh, I I think if either of the men, and Darren Chris, you know. if either of the men had been in the category, I think they could have given Darren Chris a run for his money. But I weirdly, thought Darren Chris was incredible. And weirdly, neither one of them got nominated. Right? Uh, maybe I, they maybe they canceled each other out in the supporting. nomination in the nomination category. I, I don't know. And the fact that Antonio Banderas got nominated for Picasso is hysterical. Right. And and the same thing with uh, with uh, Penelope Cruz and. Um, Edgar Ramirez yeah. for uh, supporting yes. in Versace because I felt like their characters as the Versaces were very much in the background and not nearly as entertaining as Chris's storyline. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was happy I that to, Darren Chris won. Uh, I guess I need to watch a very English scandal because Ben Whishaw uh, yeah, and, and Hugh Grant. I have not seen yeah. it. Uh, his speech was very very entertaining. Uh, I I did not know about it until it came in, until it was nominated. So mm-hmm. I. I I think it's on Amazon. Okay. I think it was an Amazon BBC thing. Okay, I got to watch that. Uh, but I have not watched it. And I will say, of the people that deserve to win something for Sharp Objects, Patricia Clarkson was the one. Yes. Patricia, uh, the, I think as entertaining as Amy Adams was, and I know she was meme worthy, and everyone was like, oh my God, she's going to win. Like, right. how can you not give the award to Amy Adams? Like, she became this like, like Twitter sensation when Sharp Objects showed up. Mm-hmm. It was less about her acting. It yeah. was more about these like moods that Jean-Marc Vallée was creating. Yes. And, and these like gift worthy moments. Whereas Patricia, Ar- Patricia Clarkson was incredible the whole way through. Oh even God. when the show I thought was Sinister. boring. And the daughter, I thought, was also really, really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their sister, her sister, Patricia Clarkson's younger daughter. Uh, I forget her name off the top of my head, but she wasn't nominated for anything. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought they were they were fine. It was a fine patch. Obviously, the comedy awards kind of took things in a weird direction sure. that I wasn't expecting. But that's, that's the one the I Golden texted Globes. you about. You that's the Golden I mean. Globes. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's move on. We got Al Pacino. He's heading to Amazon for a Nazi hunting TV series. Whoa, from Jordan Whoa. Peele. Whoa. Uh, come on. <laughs> every inch, every Nazi. Whoa. They try to, every time I try to leave, they pull me back in. <laughs> we're, we're just going to do Pacino. Just the whole time. Yeah. Uh, sure. I mean, uh, Jordan sh- Peele hasn't, hasn't done anything wrong in his entire career. Yet. Ever. Yet. Yet. He's got a lot of stuff. He's got a lot of stuff cooking right now. Yes. He's got he's got this show, which I didn't realize he was producing. Right. He's got The Twilight Zone, which yes. has a lot of a lot of uh stuff riding on it. He's got Us, the yeah. film that's coming out this spring. Mm-hmm. So I, I He's batting a thousand right now, sure. but that could change by the end of n- end of the year. I mean, I hope it doesn't. I don't want it to. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying I mean, he he has so many projects in development right now that it's like at what point when is the, there there is going to be a misfire somewhere? And I this sounds interesting. It's set in the 70s. It's, I mean, Pacino. It, okay. It's I, based in based in based based on true events. Okay, but it's Pacino acting against Logan Lerman. Okay, uh, and they're playing Two this like real life. The acting. <laughs> they're playing this real life uh, group of Nazi hunters living in 1977 New York City, uh, and I guess Lerman's character plays a kid whose grandmother is murdered, and then I think finds out that 
he was murdered by this Nazi hunting group and then becomes a Nazi hunter himself. Okay. And Pacino is like the mentor figure. Okay. I, I mean, Amazon's like they're they're bringing in big stars. They Listen, they they did Julia Roberts. They're I think they're I think they're going to agents and saying like, television's hot. Yeah. Everybody wants to be in TV. Come to us. You're going to get a big budget. You're going to get creative control, and you're going to win some gold. Sure. Like that's all it's for. They, they they want they want the awards. They want the accolades. When the movie studios have written them off, unless they want to put on a comic book costume and play the father of somebody uh, of the newest superhero, like unless unless Pacino wants to be like Shazam's grandpa, <laughs> he's not going to. They're not. They're not putting Pacino. What do you call yourself? Shazam. No, <laughs> it's a dumb name. Wrong. Think of another name and come back to your grandfather. In my day, we were just called Superman. Yeah. So unless he unless he wants to be in a superhero movie, he's not going to top line a project anymore. Sure. Because Hollywood doesn't work like that. Yeah. So it makes sense that they're all moving to television. And you know, I, I am, are, are you going to watch? Are you going to watch a Nazi hunting TV show for Amazon? I'm more. I'm more I'm, I am. I like Nazi hunting. I think it's I'm glad you it, finished that sentence. No. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I I want to see more stuff about killing Nazis. I really do. You can never go wrong in my book with. When it like what are we what are we doing here today? We're killing Nazis. Boom. Like I'm all for it. Sure, just add the Nazis as the villain. It's great. Uh, so sure, I'll watch this. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's Alpha freaking Chino. I haven't seen him in anything in so long. Right. And uh, well, he's I mean he's doing the big Netflix the the big Netflix uh, Scorsese movie. Yeah. Which we may or may not see this year. I have no idea what it's going to be. They've been producing that since we were producing Comic Con HQ. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. We broke that. I remember that was on that Comic was a, Con HQ. like a breaking episode yes. of like the the cast was assembled. This just that in. was twenty in the middle of twenty sixteen. Yes, it was and a long time ago. Then. And this movie has still not seen the light of day. Mm -mm. Uh, I think it's happening this year sometime. Well, because they have to they have to CGI their faces young. Right, they're making the young face, and that takes a long time. I guess. I mean, you could do it right. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. Or whatever movie they make yeah, him young. Uh, the Cap Captain uh, Captain America Civil War. There you go. Or they could do it wrong. Henry Cavill in Justice League. Yeah. Or whatever movie was that Justice League? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the mustache. Mustache. Yeah. I don't. I again. I don't know this technology. But we've been talking about this movie for like two and a half did. years. I thought you. Uh, I thought I you. I invented were... it. That oh. I don't know anything about I thought, it. I thought you were an early investor. I went to the company and I said, "Listen, we need to invent technology to make people younger." And they said, "Genius. Here's five billion dollars. Go live somewhere else." And I said, "I'm gonna stay on Collider because I appreciate yeah. everything that we do here." Because you want the scientists to do the science. Correct. I'm just an idea man. Thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. What was the name of the company that you uh, that you got the five billion dollars from? Uh, sh everybody crazy about a shark dressed man incorporated. Oh wow, that's a. I did not know they had they had that much seed money. It was E C A S A S D S M. Okay. <laughs> Inc. Yeah. Fair enough. There you uh, go. All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> moving on. Moving on. The Captain Marvel writer. Uh, will now be the showrunner on the Witch slash Vision, uh, Scarlet Witch Vision show on uh, this Disney Plus situation. V visit, vision of a visit, vision of a Scarlet Witch. Is that what they're calling it? I, I, vision, that sounds amazing. I think they're calling it the Vision and Scarlet Witch for now, and then oh. it might get a fancier title later. It's it's kind of like a Star Wars story. Mm -hmm. So it's like Vision and Scarlet Witch, whatever they're calling it, a Avengers story. Yeah, or like yeah. an Avengers story. An event, yeah, well, I mean. It's the under the same banner. The Scarlet Vision. It's a sequel to The Scarlet Letter. I don't know. She cheats on Vision with his brother, Hearing. And <laughs> before you know it, things go off the rails. He's not named Vision because he's, because of a sense. Like, oh, he's not? Yeah, yeah no. like Taste is Taste. not his cousin. It's not? Tasty from Orange is the New Black is oh. not related to Vision. Just, what about, just in case anyone was curious. What about Touchy? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That Touches? was no, no, no. That was that was John Lasseter, and he's now at Skydance oh, okay. Animation. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got uh, it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jack Schaefer, <laughs> who wrote wrote the upcoming Captain Marvel script, is uh, sh sh is show running uh, the new TV show. But who's show running the hearing TV? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I, I, do, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Oh, Schaefer also has the uh, the the. Uh, Feather in her in, in 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 the cap of being the screenwriter for Olaf's Frozen Frozen Adventure, oh. that twenty five minute short film that played before Coco. Oh yeah, 
Yes. It was supposed to go on television and then they put it in front of Coco. Yeah. And audiences were like, why are we watching a 25 minute short film? Yeah. My kids can't sit this still this long. I've got two hours, people. Yeah. Um, I, here's the thing. It's cool. We haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, so we don't know what we're like in four. True that. Uh, but listen, Marvel has made basically two okay movies in the entire franchise, right? Avengers Age of Ultron and Thor The Dark World. Everything yeah. else has been, been pretty spot pretty, on. Yeah, they've, they've, they've got a very good track record yes. over 10 years. I mean, I'm not the biggest but they're Captain Strange in the world. But Doctor Strange, whatever we're calling Ca- Captain Strange was okay. Doctor Strange, you know, had its moments. Well, Captain Strange was... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, he kept hanging out with Touchy all the time. Know, and touchy. I was like, oh, can't do that. It's um, Touchy and Captain Strange this fall <laughs> on Fox. Strange Touchy. Um, yeah. yeah. But I think that they the movie side has done really well. Sure. Overall, the TV side has been hit or miss, mm-hmm. depending on what platform you're on, mm-hmm. what like what distribution model you're working for, yeah. what your target audience is. Like It's been all over the place. I, these, I assume, are being run by the movie division. Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to the TV division, because they're the movie properties okay. that are moving uh, into this limited series. So I assume if Feige and his team is in charge of this, mm-hmm. that they're going to give it the, the same love and support that they give all of their films, as opposed to some of the TV shows, which, you know, hashtag uh, uh, Jessica Jones season <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, Just hashtag a thumbs down. Hashtag thumbs down. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Because um, we was should that, all be excited what was that, for What things? was the ABC show? Uh, 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 Inhumans. Inhumans. Oof. Brutal. But you know what was a very underrated ABC show was Agent Carter season one. Season one was Not really season good. Two. Season two was meh. meh. But season one I really enjoyed. Like season the hokiness of it all it was well, really well That done. was a good example of a limited series. If they had done that on – if the streaming service had existed at that point and Agent Carter could have done a limited series with a little bit larger budget. Yeah, sure. I think that show – that would have gone down as a much bigger success. Yeah. Than it was because they were working within the confines of ABC, and it was one of those weird hybrid things where it was a character from the movies that was moving over into the television world. So I think some of the I think there was some machinations up top with the executives yeah. between like Feige's team and uh, Jeff Je- uh, Loeb. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff Loeb's Loeb. team. Yeah. So. I'm looking forward to all these things. We've got the Loki show coming coming as well. Here's the thing. I don't Disney like Loki. Plus. I know I get a lot of hate for that. I'm not a big Loki guy. So I'm not psyched you're lo- about that show. You're, you're Loki hating on Loki? Well done. Yeah. Uh, just like your Loki hate of hearing, Dick. Um, but uh, I like Scarlet Witch. Vision's always just kind of... I'm, I'm like, I don't... He seems so invincible. Sometimes with superheroes, it's just like they're so invincible. And then he gets that thing ripped out of his head. It's like, when is this? Right. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Avengers, you're the one person. <laughs> uh, you mean my wife? Yeah. She, she was sick when when the movie came out, <laughs> sure. so she didn't come with me. I caught Amanda. I came home like a week ago, and she was watching Infinity War on Netflix. I was like, what are you doing? She's like, I forgot about this movie. I like it. And I was like, oh, no. Well, I mean, great. Sure, I'll sit down and watch it with you. But, Two and a half hours later. But you wouldn't go see it in the theater with me. So what's the deal? That's Netflix for anyway. you. That was actually my favorite joke that uh, didn't make it to air was uh, they're talking about Roma. And he's like, yeah, I was really moved by the whole thing it, until five seconds later when Netflix started playing a Christmas movie with Kurt Russell. <laughs> Because it's just like it's like yeah, yeah it's re- you really need to see it on any phone you can get a hold of. I've seen probably five to six trailers or commercials or whatever for Roma. Okay, mm-hmm. this is a total tangent. Whatever. Still have no idea what that movie's about. Never read a summary. Nothing from the trailer. It legitimately looks like one of those standalone episodes where Tony has a dream in The Sopranos and he's like on a farm. It's black and white. He's in a car and there's like a fish on a counter and we're all supposed to get the symbolism of it. It's like poetry. <laughs> Speaking of which. Uh, it's, it's the been, 20th anniversary of the premiere of The Sopranos. And they've been marathoning the hell out of it on HBO, and I've watched all of it. They've been marathoning it on HBO. Uh, this morning I was watching, uh, caught a little bit of the Today Show, and Harry Smith sat down with all the cast. Oh, nice. And they were doing like a reminiscent thing, and they were all crying about uh, James. Uh, about James, or Jimmy as they all called yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. They were all telling stories about working with him and about how, like, no matter no matter how small the 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 bit part was or the the supporting actor he would always ask them at the end like do you do you want another take are you good right. like did you get what you needed like he was just that kind of supportive and like the kids yeah. talking about how they like they're like he was checking in on us and we didn't even know about it like he was he was following up with people just to make sure that we were okay like in the real world 
and we had no idea. That's awesome. Like he was just so parental to everybody on the set, and and that death it was nice as far as like celebrity deaths go, and <sighs> that, that was hard. People I didn't know. Uh, I think I've told you this story before, but Christian and I were on the Fox lot over near like Rancho Park. Yeah, that one. And we were sitting and we were watching The Way Way Back, which is still one of my most underrated movies. All I love time. I that love movie. That movie. That was really good. I, anytime it's on, I will watch it. And we get and my phone is just buzzing the whole time. And you're at a screening, and I'm like trying yeah, to ignore it. Not, yeah. I woke up and it and I or woke up. The the movie ended, and I look at my phone. I turn to Chris and I go, James Gandolfini died, and we both were like. I mean, kind of lost it. Yeah. Because, I mean, The Sopranos shaped a lot of my late teens, early 20s kind yeah. of situation. It's such a seminal television show. Yeah. And what he did as Tony Soprano, maybe the greatest acting performance of a lead character ever. Yeah. I mean, ever. He, he set he set a bar. That show, I, whatever, this is a tangent. I, I love care. The Sopranos. Yes. Um, I wish I had watched it when it was, when it was first airing. Mm-hmm. I was... 13 or 14 sure. when it first premiered. Mm-hmm. So same about same Yeah, so me, I, I think I was in that world where like my parents were like you're not watching HBO, that's right. an adult show. Mm-hmm. Uh and we only had one TV with cable, so like if they didn't want me to watch it, I didn't really get into it. Yeah. I didn't get me into too. it. But I finally went back and and marathon the whole thing and I would recommend that to anyone that's never seen the Sopranos. Ca- it, it, if you catch 5 minutes of it on HBO right now, like go to HBO Go or HBO Now and and just start from the pilot. And you can go through the whole series, even even the even the so so seasons that you look at with in hindsight are like there are I some moments. I looked at them harder when I was watching them the first time. Yeah, but now I look back on it, I'm still very entertained. By it, it. Their worst episode is still better than ninety percent of everything else that's come since. Correct. They created except the Janus episode. I hate that episode. <laughs> I will go to my grave. My gravestone will say like he hated the Janus. Husband, father hated the Janus episode. Hated the Janus episode. Yeah. But I loved all the Janus episodes on Friends. I did love all the Janus episodes. Um, yeah, they uh, they they did that. Those characters. I mean, anything. The amount. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm at a loss for words just because of my like adulation for the show <laughs> and the character yeah. and 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 the real life and the real life people behind it but th- any show that you're watching right now from a storytelling perspective if you're like oh he's a bad guy but he's got a heart of gold or right. like any any trope that is popular in television now the anti-hero they all lead back to the sopranos the family dynamic the dark humor in the midst of of tragedy and violence yeah. and people dealing Men that shouldn't deal with their that aren't physically known or historically known to deal with their emotions, with a therapist dealing with their emotions and dealing with them head on. Yeah, is that was not really something that you saw on television ever before, yeah. and now it is all over the place. I mean, Mad Men was created by Math, Ma- Matthew Weiner, who worked on The Sopranos mm-hmm. and was uh, under the tutelage of David Chase, but like that show is just a direct sequel yeah. in terms of the storytelling conventions 100%. and the character development and so many so many of our peak TV shows like Breaking Bad uh, really owe everything to, to that the sopranos. to the sopranos and so yeah it, it, you a lot of people out there might have might have been too young when it was on or or never never got around to it and i would say that it not only does it hold up but it's one of those like one of those shows that you need to see yes you need to experience it so that you can understand. It's like when you're in film school yeah. and they they show you these old these old movies from the 20s and 30s, and you're like, "Why the hell do I need to watch yeah. Citizen Kane or whatever, uh, or, or uh, Gone with the Wind or or any Casablanca, of Casablanca? All yeah, those. All, all all those films. And you're like, you need to understand where we've come. And this is one of those shows that, luckily, because it's only 20 years old, it still holds up in today's world. Like mm-hmm. it's still it's still all the themes work. All of the the cinematography is still beautiful. It doesn't. Yeah. It hasn't aged oh, like no. some shows in the eighties. Don't you forget look how old. long ago that show was on? Right. And when I was watching it this week, I'm like, it it hasn't. There's nothing besides the fact that there are there aren't an iPhones. <laughs> right. That that's pretty much the only thing yeah. that hasn't yeah, aged. Yeah, like yeah, social yeah. media, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There are yeah. There are probably some uh, some. Homeland esque uh, uh, surveillance tactics, yes. Post nine eleven, and uh, that would have been employed in the late nineties, early two thousands. That didn't exist at the time. Yeah. But other than that, 
everything everything works. No, everything yeah. everything is completely current. It's awesome. Speaking of uh, a HBO HBO show, so we got a first look at some of the game. I mean, they had like a first look of all their upcoming shows. I think. I mean, besides Game of Thrones, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to Watchmen. I guess I'm not like so excited about it. The one thing that I'm really I'm, look- I'm really looking forward to. Okay. That one. Um, the one that I'm looking forward to is this Euphoria show yeah. with Zendaya. 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 Sorry. Zendaya. It's okay. Uh, it I, looks. It looks. It's cool. It looks really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's about it's about these uh, drug addicted teens, I believe. Exactly. Uh, and we've only seen a few seconds here and there. Sure. But it looks very stylized. Uh, I'm, I always like seeing uh, well written young adult characters. We've talked about this on the show a few times. Yeah. Uh, that I think that it I think it could be a new a new HBO show that really resonates. And I'm always excited when HBO does something that's not a big sweeping uh, violent epic. Like I enjoy the Game of Thrones and the Westworlds of the world uh, that they that, uh, there's always one or two that they try to come up with. Yeah. But I love when they just do a drama. Like yeah. they 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 just say like we're gonna do a really well done adult drama that isn't like anything you don't you see anywhere else because yeah. they can they they've obviously ceded some ground to Showtime and Netflix and Amazon and every and FX over the years. Yeah. They're not the only player when it comes to these shows, uh, but not anymore. Not anymore. But they are the gold standard, and I think that they need, especially with Game of Thrones ending, they need something well, to really take that mantle. Like, really, I mean, Watchmen. I think Watchmen is going to be the attempt. Watchmen and the Game of Thrones prequel and Westworld will probably get a little bit more love from the publicity side. Yeah. Once Game of Thrones is over next year, but uh, I mean, it's it. G- Game of Thrones changed the landscape in such a way that I don't know if they're going to be able to top it. Well, that's the ever. thing is is that we have this outlier. And I, I was talking to my brother about this this week. Is like you can't keep com- comparing yourself. Like, how can we be like Netflix? You can't. True. Right. So you have to try and carve out your own niche of like, how can we be more like so and so? Right. Mm-hmm. So G- G- Game of Thrones is that total outlier, and people have been trying it's to true. compete with it for the last five or six years. It's like this is our Game of Thrones. It's not. Right. Because we have Game of Thrones, what is our other thing we can do? And. And HBO hasn't done a like teenager, young adult kind of situation that looks at what life is like today yeah. for young adults. Yeah. Okay. No gloss, no whatever. Right. In middle America, you know, I mean, um, th- the things that high school kids are going through is so different from what we knew in high school. Correct. Is it's it's a very shocking thing to go back and listen to teenagers talk about what their life is like. Yeah. And that is something that isn't explored too often, especially on a channel like HBO, because we get these highly stylized things that almost seem falsified. Right. Yeah. Like 13 Reasons Why. I think some people were like it was too it was too real or right. too hyped up. And then and some people thought it wasn't real enough. And then they, you know, course corrected with season two yeah. and and to middling effects. Correct. Uh, the yes. results were not really. Yeah, they were not not receiving the same way that they did with the first season. No. And then you get all the CW shows, which are obviously glossy. Totally. And I mean, as dark American, as dark as Riverdale can get. As weird as it and like funny and spoofy as it was, the one of the more real looks at teenager life is American Vandal. True. It, yeah. Right. Like, it was very, especially season two. I think yes. it was a, a wonderful depiction of what what the connected world looks like for a teen yeah. right now. Because I just watched this movie, Anthem of a Teenage Prophet. Right. It has Peyton List and Cameron Monaghan. Right. And it takes place in 1997. When okay. I was 1997, I was in eighth grade. Yeah. Okay. So to see these kids with no cell phones, just getting in kind of trouble, and I and and it was shot in the, in Canada, but it was supposed to be in Michigan. And I was talking about that that silent sound that you have in cold weather places like a Pittsburgh, yeah, you know, like a Michigan, like places yeah. like that, where in the winter time when you get off of school, it feels weird, right? It just feels weird because it's so quiet, especially on days when it's just cold and there's no snow. It is an ugly, ugly place. It really is. And it there, I, to this day, it, like it gets me in my core. I can feel that cold. I can feel that silence. I can feel that feeling of coming home from school and just being like, I guess I'll do my homework. I mean, I can't really go outside because it's 25 degrees, but there's no snow on the ground. It's just legitimately like a dead zone. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. And that that whole look at what kids are doing now because they're bored. Like the trouble that I got into wasn't that much, but I could have gotten a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. And if I, if I had one of these, when I was that so age, my life would be very different because I would be behind bars. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, like, like, I mean, shot. like there, like there are, there are some, 
the things that kids have to go through today that yeah. we I mean if social media existed when we were in high school or college we would uh, things would be different there's a reason activities and sports exists for younger people <laughs> because they need things to do yeah 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 uh, but back On to the HBO note, thing back to Game of Thrones all, all the things but it was like one quick thing of, of her of uh, Sansa welcoming the Daenerys into Winterfell which was great yeah there's a quick little thing we still haven't seen a trailer or anything there's that um, that giant billboard that says for the throne as you're coming down uh, Highland into Hollywood. Oh, yeah. And is I see is it, it every hashtag day. for the throne? I believe. Because I see the buses and stuff are all doing the ha hashtag, hashtag, for, hashtag the for the throne. Yeah. I want I want to hear a Game of Thrones character use the word hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> We're it's... doing it hashtag for the throne. <laughs> like It's got to be the little girl from, uh, <laughs> from Bear Island, uh, Leanna Mormont. But they did say that they came out, and somebody from HBO, like one of the presidents and one of these things said, each each episode feels like a movie. Now, does it feel like a movie in length, or does it feel like Both. a movie in production? Both. Both. Because each one's going to be like almost two hours. Great. You're basically getting two seasons in seven episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Every episode is going to is going to be a long form, a long form episode. Remember, like, FX does it a lot, where like... An, You'll record an hour of uh, an hour of television, whether it's a Gianni Versace or American crime, like an American crime story show, or uh, or it's a uh, Sons of Anarchy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then you look at your DVR and you're like, that episode's an hour and forty eight minutes. <laughs> like that's a little bit long for an hour long television show. Yes, and yes. this is going to feel like that. Where like each one is going to be just jam packed. Now I hope for the Game of Thrones fans out there mm. that each one doesn't feel overstuffed. Yeah, like yeah. I like the the worst cuz I always feel like that with some of the H FX properties that are that are super double very, length very foie gras. Where it yeah, it, it, they feel like the scenes that should have made the cutting room floor mm -hmm. didn't because they wanted the longer running time. Yeah. And so thing it starts to ebb and flow from a uh, pacing problem. Sure. So I'm hoping that no one feels like that, and I'm assuming that enough people have watched like the screenings, the screening rooms, and the editing rooms for this season that they're not going to make. They're going to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yes, but like you, you, you can always they tell need, but they that one episode that's service. like a little, that's a little too long. Yeah. So I hope that that doesn't happen. If uh, if if and if they're, and they're not just doing it to do like they're doing the extra length just to say that they are doing the extra length. Yeah. Like. If it's if it's because of the story, the story permits it, and there's a lot of story you guys have to wrap up by the end of the series, yeah. Because the prequel is the prequel, like it's not like they're do they're not doing a sequel series, so that it's not like they can loot leave you some with loose ends. There's prequels, and, and it. it's just prequels yeah. until they announce that there's going to be theatrical films. Which let's be honest, HBO is going to announce it as soon as the series finale here. I would imagine, like right? like yeah. the four characters that didn't die are going to be the lead characters in the movie. Mm -hmm. Like they're just going to be gonna like see a full length action movie of Robert's Rebellion uh, and like yeah. the killing of right 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 like a like King. a like a specific storyline correct yeah. yeah. But speaking of the prequel, yeah, they found a director for it. Yeah, S. J. Clarkson. Uh, who uh, helmed a couple episodes of Succession last season. Which is a great show. And was supposed to direct Star Trek IV, mm -hmm. uh, but that movie has been officially shelved, according to these press releases. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Because, I know. Uh, because, there, well, there were there were pay disputes between the Chris's. Chris uh, Pine and Chris Hemsworth yeah. uh, were not agreeing on salaries, and so Paramount has shelved it for the time being. Always with a Chris. So, sh yeah. So SJ's schedule opened up, and now she's directing the prequel pilot. For Game of Thrones. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Talk about falling backwards into success. <laughs> I, yeah. Shin. See, mm. sick, no? No. Nah, fucking no. bad pun. All right. No. Uh, okay, so we got Star Trek news. Let's pass on that. Hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hey, speaking of Star Trek, yeah. real quick, um, mm -hmm. not only they've been doing a lot of press right now because season two premieres next week, mm -hmm. uh, everyone's been asking them all about the Star Trek Picard series because, mm -hmm. you know, that's the big buzzy new project with uh, Patrick Stewart returning to television. And it's not going to be a spinoff and be House of Picard. It's right? not going to be House of Picard, though they don't have a title yet, so mm. you still have hope. Mm. House of Picard could still happen. Yeah. But what they did announce... It's like Big Mama's House with Jean-Luc Picard, Big Mama's House of Picard. <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm with You're you now. In now. I'm in now. Yep. I'm in now. Yep. I'm in. If that's yep. what it takes to get you to watch, <laughs> I will. I will just scratch out the cover of the DVD <laughs> when I hand you a screener. Uh, 
<laughs> Go on. I'm sorry. It's, I, uh, I apologize. It's okay. So uh, so Alex Kurtzman, who's now the o- the overseer of the Star Trek franchise mm-hmm. in this new iteration, uh, it has now formally said that this show. They're saying it takes place 20 years after the last movie he did. Okay. So it'll take place in 2399. Okay. Uh, and good year. Yeah, good year. Great year. It's good year. Good year for wine. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, so it's going to take place, but it's going to take place after the events that were in. Did you see the J.J. Abrams Star Trek movie? Like the first one? Yeah. I yeah, did. yeah, yeah. So it opened. It, the first Star Trek movie opened with Leonard Nimoy yeah. uh, fighting against Eric Bana, and it opened with a supernova that that destroyed the planet Romulus. Right. Follow along with me here. I, no. Romulus. The, and there's the Romulans. The Romulans, look, know the they look like the Vulcans, uh-huh. but they're like... Angrier. They're angrier. Like they, they, they split off centuries ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so the Vulcans are the emotionless people and the Romulans are more emotion, mm-hmm. acting upon emotion. Yeah. So their planet disappears. And is it's completely like this wiped out. This generation of Italians versus my dad's generation of Italians. No emotion, all emotion. Yes. Unless you're talking about the mothers, they're always emotional. True that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, so that, and then Spock, after mm-hmm. the supernova, gets sucked into a black hole, which creates the new timeline. Got it. Where Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto are hanging out in as young Kirk and Spock. Got it. So. The opening of the J.J. Abrams movie took place in Picard's world. Got it. And this show is going to continue that. So it's going to say, okay, that event happened in 2387. Okay. And the last Picard movie was 2385, I okay. believe. And now this one's going to be 2399. So it's continuing the story. So everything that happened at the beginning of the J.J. movies okay. with Spock, basically, as far as they're concerned... They don't know about Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto. They all they the know world is would not be as good of a place without knowing both of those. I, I mean, I'm I'm hoping that they still have a poster of them somewhere. Yeah. But it's a Sp- Romul- Romulus disappears or is destroyed by the supernova. Spock disappears at that same time and is presumed dead. Mm-hmm. Really, he goes back in time into an alternate universe. Spocker. And now Jean Luc Picard is dealing with all the aftermath of the planet Romulus getting blown up Got and it. the Romulans whoever is left kind of going crazy and the whole empire falling. Okay. So this show is going to take place in that time period. And when, apparently when they pitched it all to Patrick Stewart, he agreed to do the show only after saying to them that he wanted to do something that felt familiar, but was completely surprising and different. Okay. So he, so I assume that this show in, in theory, in hope will be something completely different in tone okay. than what we saw back in the eighties. Because it kind of has to be sure. for it to work. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Discovery is different in tone for a whole different reason. But this show, if it's a continuation of the same character, needs to feel like that original show in those movies so that the character feels the same but also take a new direction. So we haven't gotten a title yet. We haven't got confirmation of any other actors, previous or current. But we do know that it does take place in the master timeline and that everything's kind of connected in this weird way. So for all of us Trekkies, it, we can we can follow the lines. And, and for those at home, everything. Thad will be drawing a picture of this and putting it up on his Twitter after the episode just so you guys are all aware of what it the timeline looks like. It makes sense when you think about it. Got it. It does. It I don't does. Know. I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited for Star Trek Discovery Season 2. Okay. They've also announced that they're putting together a lot of animated properties, mm. not just the adult one from the Rick and Morty producer, but uh, they are also doing some children's uh, themed, uh, family-oriented animated shows because they want to introduce Star Trek to a new generation, which is what the original animated show did. Introducing it to the, the next, next generation? generation, the next next new generation. Don't look. Don't. What are you doing? He's. If you're listening at home, he's covering my uh, <laughs> my camera with his own face. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of Star Trek in the works. Alex Kurtzman's kind of overseeing all of it. He says yeah. he's doing it from thirty thousand feet so that he can kind of. Kind of keep in track of everything in a plane. He's in a helicopter and he's just he's circling all of the writers' rooms. It's really kind of weird. They all have to have glass ceilings. Literally, I'm hoping that they're broken, but uh, they're like they are uh, they are there so that he can look down at them. Got it. Okay, uh, Makes but sense. yeah, and then he's also show running the day to day operations on Star Trek Discovery. So he's very busy right now. Sounds exhausting. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. We've got a bunch of trailers. 
Okay. Ton. And almost all Netflix trailers, but not all. Not all of them. Okay. Friends from college. Let's go. Let's say rapid fire rapid these because we're we are up against it. Because we talk about Sopranos, and that's okay. That's all right. Uh Friends from College season two looks good. Looks did funny. you watch season one? I did. I really liked it. You did? Okay. Yes. I, I was reading about it. I never watched it. I heard it got it, it, a lot of people didn't like it because they didn't like the characters. They thought they were unlikable. This this season seems like a they're kind of unlikable. This season seems like they're retooling the the premise a little bit. Sure. Or extend extend changing the characters up as time moves on. Yeah, I, but I, it has it has the it same feel. It still feels it still feels like it. Yeah, for it's sure. I, I yeah, I'm I'm curious. I I didn't watch the original. Uh, I'm w- so we've heard some mixed things via the Punisher. I'm not going to say anything other than that because of an embargo. Uh, but the review you can you can listen to or watch uh, should be out now. Right now, uh, Roca. Oh, so I can talk about it. Roka, Dorian, and Haley. Haley Fouch. Uh, I believe I'll, 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 I'll uh, get in on it. And uh, it, it debuts on January 18th. We see a full trailer that came out this week. Um, and it's then fine. On January 19th, we'll learn that it's probably canceled. And, probably. And that's that. And that's unfortunate because I feel like because they're canceling all these, the writer's room was just tasked with creating 13 episodes and not tasked with creating something great. Yeah, I, I'm worried that that might have been the case. The trailer that I watched, the most recent trailer... The story seems interesting enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it, I don't know. I just, it, it, I'm having a hard time getting into it. And I, and I think it's partially because it I was kn- like Luke Cage season I two. I know it's was... going to get canceled. Yes. It's like it's hard to watch when I know episodes. It's hard to 13 hours of, of of something when there's so much other stuff going on. And I know that there's an. It's not like I know that it's the final season. It's yeah. that I know that they kind of got the rug pulled out from under them after two. <laughs> Two years in the writer's room. I'm going to talk to .com because this might be like a, an interesting thing to do. Of why don't you report like do an article of the sex Punisher episodes, seven Punisher episodes you should watch <laughs> while getting the whole view of the season. So like season, so like episode one, uh, episode four, five, yeah, maybe eight, nine finale, right? And you and you don't need anything else in between there is sort of just filler, yeah. Because it's going to get canceled. Right. I'd like to see what happens, but I don't want to sit through 13 hours. Exactly. Just a thought. What about 127 hours? Uh, lose an arm. Okay. Yeah. Also debuting on Jan- January 18th is the Fire Festival documentary from the creators of Jim and Andy. I can't wait for this. Uh, that trailer. I mean, this looks incredible yeah. because uh, they, they they use a great they use a clip of Ron Funches on Conan mm-hmm. where he says like the people that got that lost all their money had enough money to fly to a private island to see a Blink-182 concert. So they kind of did this to themselves, yeah. uh, <laughs> which I don't disagree with. Yeah. Uh, and he said it much funnier than me because he's Ron Funches <laughs> and he's very funny. But uh, I, I, this documentary looks incredible. And I, this story is too... Hysterical. Re- it's too crazy to be true, but it really is. Yeah. It, this really happened. And it's, it's like the story of the guy who convinced everybody that he had enough money to buy the New York, New York Islanders back in like 1995, 96, and he didn't have any money. I don't he remember zero the story. Doll. They made a document. They made a 30 for 30 on ESPN oh. about it. He fooled the entire, like the entire Long Island. He said he had all this money. He had these backers. They never even checked his financial. <laughs> I swear to God, dude, it was a hockey team that was dying for money. And so this guy was like, I'll gladly buy the New York Islanders. I have money. And they're like, awesome. And they said he was friends with some Texas. He had no money. He wasn't paying anything. Payments were coming up. He wasn't making payments. Pretty crazy story. That's uh, nuts. Very fiery. Uh, also, we had a trailer for Russian Doll, uh, which is a very Groundhog Day kind of thing, which, as you so well said, it's coming out on February 1st and not February 2nd. It, this is literally Groundhog Day. This is this is a dark, twisted story, it's similar to kind of Happy Death Day in tone, Yeah. where uh, – Natasha Leone's character keeps dying. Who's great? At Natasha Leone. She's fantastic. at a she's at a crazy party and she keeps dying every night, and uh, and waking up at the exact same party over and over again yeah. and trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, lots of recognizable faces throughout the thing. Amy Poehler's an executive producer, apparently. Yeah. So uh, trailer looks really funny. It does. I love. Yeah, like you said, I love Natasha Leone. I just don't know if I need to see another Groundhog Day premise. Uh, I'm I'm with you. On I don't this know one. how many. I don't know how many episodes this is. If this is like eight episodes, I could probably do it. Great. If it's if it's thirteen, I don't know. Right. <laughs> like, I'm with you. I don't know. Uh, another trailer. Uh, we got this trailer for um, this Fosse Verdon um, show, and I just said, I hope it's not a musical. I hope there aren't like big musical numbers in it that have to do. Like if they're practicing a musical number from something we've already seen, I get that it's part of the plot, but I don't want them to break out into song in this show. If That's they fair. Do, okay. 
I can I can understand that. This looks really cool. Sam Rockwell is playing Bob Fosse. Michelle Williams is playing Gwen Verdon, mm-hmm. uh, who was a very famous Broadway dancer. Yeah. Um, I mean, the trailer says it. The greatest like eye and mind of Broadway yeah. with the greatest dancer on Broadway it history. It sounds like an amazing story. Yes, and, and I love the true story stuff, too. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. and uh, apparently it was uh, written and showrunned by uh, Stephen Levinson, who wrote Dear Evan Hansen, the musical, oh, yeah. which uh, is very good. Very good. I, I saw it on Broadway a couple of years ago. Okay. Uh, and executive produced by Lin-Manuel Durant, <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda and Thomas Kale from okay. Hamilton. Yeah. So uh, so they have a lot of Broadway caliber stuff going on in the show. I don't know if it's a musical or if it's just music oriented in tone. Mm-hmm. It's a limited series um, in April. Uh, but I mean, another uh, this will be one a, of those that will probably get another really good FX limited series. I tell you what, FX, they're limited. They might as well just, just make limited series. I mean, here on I, I'd be totally fine if that's all they did. If they like were they spend a little bit more money every time and they're just Bookended shows. I agree. Like that's fine with me. Yep. Uh, we got a creepy teaser for this Hannah remake, which I mean, Joel Kinnaman. Is it Marie? Marielle. Marielle. Enos. Yeah. From the Killing. I mean, Killing. Yeah. What is awesome? I loved that show, and I was surprised to see that uh, that the TV series version. This is an adaptation of the film that Saoirse Ronan starred in a few years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, but they're reu- they reunited Joel Kinnaman and Marielle Enos, who were both the leads of the Killing, which was. Uh, Great Fine by duo. me. Fine by me. And this sounds like a really cool, really cool thing. Uh, Eric Bana, I think, is also in the show. Maybe? Okay. I uh, or I'm making that up. Or I mean, he was in the movie. Let me do a little research. Holy here. crap! I'm by the by. I think I, maybe Eric Bana played the Joel Kinnaman role in the movie. So Saoirse Ronan and that Hannah is uh, 2011. Yeah. Um, and this one, let's see. Is yeah, there... he's not credited. He must have been in the. He was in the movie. I'm okay. confusing things. But, I but Eric stop Banna in, the morning. in uh, Dirty John. Oh man. Yeah. I tell you what. When he's it a, started, he's a dick. I when it started, I was like, eh, I don't like him. But it, like the because I listen to the podcast right sure. with with the wife and she loves this show and it's on Bravo. Which by the by, if you if you haven't seen Bravo in a long time, the amount of commercial breaks in a Bravo show. It's like the nightly news with Joel Meir. I know, or, uh, I know, Kevin. I What's know, this? I know, I know, and I and I watch Top Chef religiously, and and uh, and six minutes of TV, it's five minutes, so commercials. many commercials, it's absurd. Yeah, but so Dirty John. Uh, at first, I was like, Eric Ban is not a good actor, and then I was realizing, like, no, this guy is just the worst, and you want to hate him. Doesn't yeah. matter who the actor is, yeah. kind of a situation. Eric Ban is a really good actor. He's a really good actor. He's acting this part really, really well, and I think it's because, like. This guy is such a just weirdly scummy human being. Yeah, I, I mean, it's good. Dirty John is good. I, I kind of highly recommend it. It's I didn't. I mean, and the amount of uh, cameos from very famous people in Dirty John. Yeah, pretty awesome. You know, and Connie Britton. She, I mean, she's always great. I, yeah, I, lo- I, I like her. She'll a lot. never not be Coach Taylor's wife to me. But true. Uh, I don't know this Hannah thing. I mean, with those two in the lead, that's a good selling point for me. Yeah, I, I'm 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 curious. I know we've we we got to wrap it up here, sure. but uh, we oh, got yeah, a lot. Like, yeah, we got a lot of stuff going uh, on. David Fincher, Tim Miller doing an animated series. Okay, cool, great. I mean, great names. Sure, sure. It's on Netflix. Shocking. It's robots. De- it's called like, Love Death Robots. Yeah. And if you put robots in the title, probably not going to watch it. I'm yeah, just giving that's you straight fair. up. Love Death and Robots is not up your alley. Sarah Michelle Gellar's coming back to TV. Boom. Love her. Warner Brothers uh, Warner Brothers Television is uh, doing a show with Ellen DeGeneres' company based on a novel about a woman who wakes up uh, from a coma. Or she's she wakes up. She's unable to move. Mm-hmm. She's like in a hospital. She thinks her husband had something to do with it. Oh. And she's like trying. She's trying to communicate with people, but they don't know that she can hear them and stuff. Oh. So, and I love it's Gonna, it, and like. it's gonna bounce back and forth in time, like before the accident, after the accident, okay. that kind of thing. Bing, bing. So, sounds interesting. I like it. I like her. It's like a, she's while back. you were sleeping, but serious. Yeah, but dark. Dark. Uh, I love you, America. Canceled. I never watched it. I didn't either. I saw some clips on the uh, YouTube's and it made me laugh. Yeah, I love Sarah Silverman. I just me too. Didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't watch it every week, and apparently, no one else did. Yeah. Uh, Kim Delaney, and you could take this one. <laughs> the NYPD Blue sequel yeah. uh, is actually getting me excited to watch it now. They've announced that Kim Delaney, who was a longstanding police officer in the show, is coming back. And Bill Brotstrup, who played the uh, the, the front desk uh, dispatch officer. Ah, yes. Uh, and they're both re- uh, reprising their roles in the sequel. Do you think he got a um, promotion? I'm thinking that she is the police lieutenant. Okay. 
or she's out of the force altogether, retired, and he like has to like consult with her because he's trying to investigate his dad's murder. Yeah. And then yeah, I think I think I, I assume that Bill Brostrup, after twenty years working the front desk, has been promoted in some fashion. You'd hope. I would hope. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, all the the. You know, the usual suspects got DGA television directing nominations. Yeah. Uh, a couple of my friends, the Michelers, uh, got nominated f- as part of the directing teams for Jesus Christ Superstar Live. Oh, cool. And uh, and I think the the Emmys or the Tonys or something, the gr- awesome. or the Grammy Awards last year, actually. Cool. Um, but Jesus Christ Superstar Live is in the same category as Escape at Danamora and uh, Maniac because they lumped them all in the limited series or movie category. Oh, uh, okay. And that seems really weird to me because I feel like that would be in more of like the variety specials. Well, if they can do it at the Globes, why aren't they doing it? At the, I don't is know. Is that just too many awards? Yeah. Uh, trophies are expensive. Is, <laughs> is uh, So wait, tell the story. You sent me a text. Ben Stiller liked one of your, your tweets about Dana Mora. Uh, well, I I, uh, I responded. He was, he was tweeting about a musical or uh, he was tweeting about uh, – Network on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Uh, he retweeted something that Ron Howard tweeted that was like, "I saw this and this was amazing yeah. and wonderful direction." And Brian Cranston was great. And he re- retweeted it was like, "I was also there and I agree with Ron Howard because he's Ron Howard yeah. and he's awesome." Sure. And I, I was, I was like, "Don't sell yourself short. You're a DGA nominated director now. Yeah. Like, good for you. Like, let's keep it in more. It was incredible." And he liked it. And now we're going out to dinner and Boom. you know we're like best friends. Look at you. We're best friends. President Red. That's just how. The, yeah. I'm just. It's, I, I'm changing my last name to Stiller. Oh. Actually. Thad Stiller. Thad Stiller. That sounds like a really good China company. Do you know what I mean? Like we that that's a Thad right. Stiller. It's a Thaddeus, like Thaddeus Stiller a, a, Crystal. A, original. Yeah. It's a Thaddeus Stiller. Have original. you had the newest collection from Thaddeus Stiller? <laughs> like it's not bad, man. It's really not <laughs> it bad. Could work. It Thanks. could work. Yeah. Uh yeah, and that's about it. I mean, I watched a couple weird TV Tell pilots me about this them. week. Uh I watched Valley of the Boom, Ooh. which is a docudrama hybrid series. Oh, okay. They it's about the start startups from Silicon Valley in the uh, 90s. Okay. And they interviewed the people today and then they recreated and expanded on the characters oh, you sent with me a link actors. For this, I think. It's weird. Okay. And it's not great, but okay. there's only six hours and I'll pro- I've already watched two of them. All right. So I'll probably finish it because it's like I've already I'm already a third of the way there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Steve Zahn's in it. Bradley huh. Whitford's in it. I love Steve Zahn. I He's love not him. enough stuff. I, he was great in Treme. He really was. Uh, and I, he was under underutilized in a lot of things. Yeah. But it's it's weird. A Project Blue Book was a sci fi show trying to be the X Files, yeah, but like on, on the History Channel. Okay. It was not good. Yeah. So a- Aiden Gillen from uh, uh, Game of Thrones was on it. Speaking of history, real quick, uh, they said next season will be the last season of Vikings. I did see that, yeah. and they're gonna, but they're working on a sequel, sequel kind of a situation, a sequel spinoff series, right? Because it's a really big hit, and they I don't want to lose it. I, I, what I do with Vikings, I save the season and then I binge it because it's really uh, hard to watch back to back to back to back. Like it's, I mean, it's really hard to watch week to week because I want to binge it. You just so want to keep going. It's correct. a binge. It's show. a really good binging show. Nice. Uh, quick question before we go: Is Valley of the Boom better than Here Comes the Boom starring Kevin James? Um, no, because nothing is better than Here Comes the Boom starring Kevin James. I think that. That's actually in the AFI list as the best movie of all time. <laughs> I knew it. Yeah. I knew it. And that's the kind of stuff you get here on Collider TV Talk. Legion of Boom meets <laughs> Project nope, none of, of those, the Boom. None of those words were right. Here comes the Boom yeah. and Valley of the yeah, Boom. Yeah. Uh, thank you <laughs> More. Al Pacino, listen. Tell me. <laughs> I need the leads. I need, if they're a Nazi, I want to know about it. If they're a Nazi, I want to know them. Um, sorry for yelling. That's uh, This is an episode of Collider TV Talk here on Collider. Collider Podcast is the channel where you can find the video. Collider TV Talk is a podcast feed, which if you're listening to it now, you're subscribed. But tell somebody. Tell a lot of people. Join in on the fun of the show. Tweet us at Josh McCuga, at Thad Williams. Correct. Uh, we've got all kinds of fun episodes. You've also got Collider Hypotheticals with myself and Roxy Stryer here on the feed. All kinds of fun TV coming out. So if you're not watching TV, what are you doing? If you have a book in your hand, put it down. Pick up the remote.